Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Okay, uh, here we are again, uh, taking a look at wiring issues. And the one I want to focus on today is something called inductance and related issues uh, that come about due to the fact that our uh, DCC power buses aren't just power buses, they're also data transmission lines as well. So you have to be aware of some of the, uh, the consequences of the DCC signal and interactions with the wires on your layout. One of the things that can happen with uh, wires and with current passing through wires is that you can build up an electromagnetic field inside of the wires themselves. One thing that they found out quite early with telecommunications, and, and I'm talking the telephone, was that if you put, and let me get this here, uh, they found that, you know, if you just string a couple of wires up, then there's a lot of potential for uh, crosstalk between them and to pick up uh, uh, noise, electronic noise, from other sources in the environment. So what they discovered was, and I think this goes all the way back to Alexander Graham Bell, uh, that by twisting these wires like this, that you could actually create a system where these individual wires with that varying DCC uh, AC type uh, current flowing through it will produce a, uh, an electromagnetic field uh, around the wire. So each wire will have its own electromagnetic field and it's going to be a mirror image of each other in DCC because it's the same signal out and back, right? Uh, if these are very close to one another, the two electromagnetic waves will cancel, or the two electromagnetic fields will actually cancel each other out. And therefore you won't build up a lot of the problems that can occur as a result of interactions and noise and, and that kind of thing. Um, so what then uh, can happen is, if you do not do this, and, and this is dependent on the amperage running through this and, and other, a lot of other factors. But what it boils down to, though, is you can build up electrons within the wire itself. It, acts, it has a certain amount of capacitance. And other factors can, can crop in. And when you have a short on the layout, those little intermittent shorts that occur when somebody you know, runs uh, through a closed switch and, and you get a quick short or anything like that, you'll get a sudden surge of electrons out of the wire and also out of your command stations and boosters. And those surges can be very large and they can uh, cause problems. They can actually blow decoders under extreme circumstances. So um, that is uh, why um, uh, NCE Corporation, a number of years ago, starting recommending to all of their uh, customers that they twist their wires like this for their main power buses three times per foot. And basically to do that, you put it in a drill and have somebody hold the other end of the wires and you turn it on and let it run up and then let it unwind a bit and, you know, hopefully you'll get three turns per foot like that. Now, of course, that's going to shorten your wire because you're twisting it. It also makes it difficult to install feeders in here. So I initially started doing this on my layout. However, uh, I was talking with Larry, Larry Meyer one day, and Larry is the one who designs uh, all of the products for DCC specialties. So he is a telecommunications expert and also a DCC expert. And what Larry told me was, he took a roll, a 100-foot roll of 12-gauge zip cord, speaker wire, like this here, and he ran a DCC signal through a 100-foot section of this wire. And what he found was that it cleaned up the signal just as if the wires had been twisted. And the reason for that is the ability of twisted wires to uh, interact and, and to cancel each other out and prevent uh, inductance-related noise issues is dependent on how close the two wires are. And the only thing that twisting does is it brings those two wires very, very close together. Uh, if instead you take two wires and you put them in the same um, 
vinyl uh, coating like this, or vinyl envelope, they are held very close together. And, you know, some people say that, well, there's a little tiny gap in between them there, uh, you know, in the middle where the zip area is, the zipper where you can pull these apart, because you can just go like that and zip it apart. Um, basically, they say that, oh, that, that doesn't work as well because they're not as close together. Well, if you measure the thickness of the case or the insulator uh, on the vinyl insulation on the outside of, you know, 12 gauge or 14 gauge wire I, and multiply times two, I think you'll find that the distance between those two wires is going to be about the same as the distance between this one. And I think that's why Larry Meyer's approach works so well. So under my layout, I use 14 gauge speaker wire. And you can get this, it's, you know, reasonably priced, fairly inexpensive. Uh, it comes like this, uh, and you can just pull it apart. Um, it's stranded wire, okay, so it's flexible, it's easy to get in to locations under your model railroad. If you need to uh, insert a feeder in here, you can split it and pull it apart. And uh, I use suitcase connectors, and I did a video previously on using suitcase connectors, and I will include a link to that right here above me. Uh, but basically then, this thing, it works great. I, I've got this under my entire layout now. I ripped out all the old 14 gauge solid wire like this that I had started to uh, go back and twist, and I'm using this now. So what are some of the symptoms that you might be having problems with inductance and wire length? Well, one common problem is runaways, where the locomotive will suddenly take off, okay? And it will lose control in certain sections of the layout. And that's typically due to not having enough uh, voltage out at the far distant portions of the layout, but it can also be to this issue related to uh, the signals themselves. Because one thing that can happen with the uh, DCC signal uh, when, the, uh, when inductance issues become a problem and wiring becomes an issue is that the signal becomes distorted and the decoder will actually reject the signal. And if you get enough rejections in a row, then the locomotive, locomotive might not respond to your commands uh, from your throttle. Uh, and, and that relates to both uh, runaways and loss of control in general. Okay, You might not be able to change uh, the speed of the locomotive. You might, you might, might not be able to uh, blow the whistle or the horn or, or whatever uh, because there's just not enough power getting through or the signal is degraded to the point that the locomotive is not listening to it and responding. Now another issue that, that can crop up, and, and people have asked about this in the past, uh, is corrupted CVs, because you might find that your locomotive suddenly doesn't respond to its address anymore, or various other things. And that can be due to the fact that when shorts occur on the layout and when things like this happen, um, you can actually have the CV itself being changed uh, in the decoder, okay? And that's when doing a factory reset can set everything back to the proper values and you can reprogram it and get it working again. And if you're seeing a lot of situations like that on your layout, then that's an indication that you probably need to look at your wiring and see whether or not you've got adequate wiring on your layout and whether or not uh, you might be uh, seeing issues as far as the length of your wire not um, uh, being too long for the size of it. Okay, finally, and, and this is the most significant one, and, and one that doesn't happen very often, blown decoders. Because, as I said earlier, what can happen is, when you get a short on the layout, a lot of the electricity, or a lot of the electrons that build up inside of your DCC power bus, and uh, also that are stored in capacitors in your boosters and, and the like, all of that stuff can come rushing out during a short circuit. And if it is big enough, it can literally blow out your decoder because you can get voltage spikes, you know, that are uh, 20 to 30 volts. And that's enough to blow a decoder in, in many cases. So that's some of the things you have to be aware of. Now, our, I already showed you one way that you can fix this problem, and that is by twisting your wires three times per foot 
uh, on, on, on uh, systems over 30 feet in length. Also, amperage is an issue. Anytime you get up over about 5 amps uh, with your power supply, that can also be an issue that you need to consider. So some people will tell you if your wires are 30 foot in length or you're using a 5 or an 8 or a 10 amp booster, then you should be twisting your wires. Okay. Now, another gadget that uh, is available is something called a snubber. Uh, and this is uh, a, a product here that is available from NCE on their website. And you get a two pack of these for $13 from NCE. And it basically, it's also called an RC filter. And what it will do, it's got resistors and capacitors on it. That's why it's called an RC filter. It's a resistor capacitor filter. And what it does is it's got a capacitor on here that is tuned for a specific frequency. And it will allow certain frequencies of DCC power to pass and it will block others. Okay, And this is wired across your power bus wire. Okay? So you would put one of these at the end of a 30 foot, 40 foot, 50 foot, whatever power bus on your layout. And what it will do is when a surge occurs or when other uh, problems occur, it will allow certain uh, ones to pass through the wire or through this device and they will be dissipated by these resistors on here. Okay? So it's got a, a bunch of resistors. That allows you to basically filter out a lot of these issues related to uh, inductance and inadequate wiring. It'll also uh, fix a lot of the problems with uh, malformed waveforms in DCC. And that way you won't get rejections of commands by decoders out at the far areas of your layout. Okay. So these are a great device. You can also build your own. And um, if you go to uh, the uh, NCE website and look up Snubber on their information station section, they show you, uh, they provide a lot of information on how these things work, how they were designed, etc., and how you can build your own or you can buy theirs, uh, which are very convenient. They have little screw terminals here so that you can just hook them right up to the end of your power buses. And um, I use these on my layout. I've got uh, them all over. In addition to having uh, the uh, zip cord uh, wiring that I use. Okay, that pretty much wraps up everything I've got to say about inductance. I am not an expert on this. If you want a lot more information, I recommend that you go uh, to Mark Gurry's website and I will include a link to his website and he can go into the excruciating details of why this occurs. I've had very, uh, very long telephone conversations with him about this and there are still things that I'm finding out every time I speak with him and other experts on this. Um, now I know you're also going to have some questions related to using uh, twisted wire versus the speaker wire versus using snubbers. And generally what, what uh, recommendations people tell me is uh, if you've already got your wire in place and you know, you're having issues that appear to be uh, related to these inductance issues and you know, the symptoms that I laid out uh, uh, earlier, go ahead and add the snubbers first. Okay. Think of the snubber as a band-aid. And if the band-aid doesn't work, then you have to go in for the more intensive operation, which means, you know, pulling out your wires, your DC, your DCC power bus, and replacing them either with the twisted pairs or with the um, uh, speaker wire uh, that I showed you earlier that Larry Meyer uh, came up with as a fix, uh, as opposed to doing the twisted pairs. So that's one or the other. I know that the folks at NCE are going to tell you that they prefer you to do twisted pairs. Um, uh, I am having good luck with the speaker wire and think it uh, you know achieves pretty much the same uh, result as you will get with twisted pairs. Now I will tell you that other manufacturers may have other suggestions. 
Uh, years ago, Lens was suggesting adding capacitors across their buses. So, you know, you might uh, want to try what they suggest if you're a Lens owner. And it should be in their manuals or tech sheets or, you know, their tech support people can tell you that. I also have talked with the uh, with AJ Ireland, who is, you know, the designer and co-owner of Digitrax. And he doesn't feel that uh, snubbers and twisted pairs on your layout like that are necessary. Although they do recommend twisted pairs more recently, but they're still not recommending uh, snubbers or RC filters. So basically, you know, talk to the uh, manufacturer or the manufacturer's representative, their tech support people, find out what they feel about using either twisted pairs or speaker wire or snubbers with their particular systems, okay? And that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to try. Go to, the, go to the source, go to the guys who are the tech support people for your DCC system and do what they suggest first. And then after that, if that doesn't work, then you're pretty much on your own to try other measures to, to deal with these issues. And, you know, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that this is something that I recommend in all cases. It's something that works for me and has worked for uh, people with NCE systems. I'm a Digitrax user and it's worked with my system. I'll leave it up to you to find out from your own tech support people for your DCC system what's going to work best for you in your given environment. So uh, be safe, uh, stay away from that nasty virus, and have a good week.